Hey everybody, thanks for tuning in. We're sitting in a 2015 Ford Edge with the check engine light on. Now the owner did say that it's running just fine. There's no drivability complaints, but the light is on. So let's go ahead, we'll pull codes, see what we got. In our engine computer, we're showing a P1450. The description is cannot bleed up fuel tank vacuum. That might be a little confusing description, but really what it means is that the fuel tank pressure sensor is detecting a vacuum in the tank when there should not be a vacuum. This code is an EVAP system related code. We're worried about three major components, the fuel tank pressure sensor, the vent solenoid, and the purge solenoid. So what we're gonna do, pull up some scan data and just see what each of these three components are doing. So this is what we were able to pull up. We have the commanded evaporative purge, that's the purge solenoid, by the engine. We have the evaporative emissions canister vent valve, so that's the vent valve near the fuel tank. On this particular model, it's connected directly into the charcoal canister. We have the fuel tank pressure sensor in PSI, and then the fuel tank pressure sensor in volts. Now we don't necessarily need it in volts, but that's how the manual is having us check it, is in volts. I think 2.4 to 2.8, somewhere in between there, is perfectly fine at rest. So nothing is on, everything is vented properly. If you look at our pressure in PSI, we're 0 0.002, so practically zero, and that's just atmospheric rest condition. No pressure, no vacuum. Now one thing to keep in mind with our purge is that this is commanded purge. So when it says zero, that means it's off. A purge solenoid is normally closed. So when it's off, it's closed. When it's on or commanded a certain percent, that means it's open uh, that percent. If it's on 100%, then it's just on fully, 100%, or somewhere in between. The vent valve is the opposite. When it's off, it's normally open to allow free venting airflow back and forth. It's normally open. So when you see a zero here, that means it's open or supposed to be open. And then when you see it commanded a certain percent, that means it's being closed whatever percent that is. So the purge is normally closed, the vent is normally open. So just something to keep in mind as we're going through this diagnosis. So now let's go ahead, start the car and just see what our numbers do. The fact that at rest, we have not started the car yet, at rest, our fuel tank pressure is neutral, which is, that's a good sign. If our fuel tank pressure sensor was biased in one way or another, we could be pinpointing or trying to look at our fuel tank pressure sensor a little closer but the fact that right off the bat, it's zero, doesn't put up any red flags or anything in that respect. So let's go ahead and start it up, hit the button. All right, let's look at our numbers here. So our fuel tank pressure dropped some, so we're in a slight vacuum. Nothing's being commanded, but we're still within our voltage spec, so we're good there. This won't trip any codes until it's below a 2.4 with zero command. Let's just let it do its thing. Eventually the purge valve will start to actuate. But here we're still within specs. There we go. So our purge valve is being commanded 10%, 11%. And you can see our fuel tank pressure is dropping. So we're pulling a slight vacuum. Our volts show it. We're below 2.4. That's normal because our purge is open. So our intake manifold vacuum is pulling vacuum in the system, so that's normal. So what we wanna do, let's go under the hood. I want to disconnect our purge and see if this number goes back to neutral or if it gets stuck. If it goes straight back to neutral, then I'm not worried about our fuel tank pressure sensor because it looks like it's sensing just fine, but let's see how quickly it'll, it'll go back. It'll revert to neutral. So under the hood, under our air duct here, the purge is right here and you can kind of feel it, it'll be clicking. You can feel it click, you may be able to hear it click. Well, that's because it's commanded on. Right now it's commanded about 40%. So you'll be able to, to feel it right under here. You come around, see where my finger is, right on here. So what we're gonna do is disconnect the electrical connector that'll shut off our purge and we'll watch our voltage, we'll watch our vacuum to see if it instantly goes back to neutral. I'll set you up here, so I'm just gonna Pull this off. So here's the electrical connector off. I'm gonna plug it back in. You see we, we straight away went into a vacuum. I'm gonna undo it. And we went right back up. 
vacuum and plugged it in. 0 0.1, 0 0.12, 1, 1. Unplugged, dropped right back down. Plugged in, climbed right back up, unplugged. Okay, that tells me two things. One, the fuel tank pressure sensor is able to detect a change in pressure and display that change pretty rapidly. So I don't think it's a skewed sensor and I don't think it's a lazy sensor. I think the fuel tank pressure sensor is working just fine. It also tells me that our vent valve being fully open, there's no blockage in that valve because the pressure or vacuum in this case was able to neutralize pretty rapidly. If there was some sort of blockage in the system, it would take a lot longer to go back to equilibrium or go back to a neutral pressure. So I also think our vent valve is working just properly. I don't think we have any kind of blockage in the system. So that leaves one more option, the purge solenoid. If the purge solenoid is stuck open or somehow not closing all the way when it should, then the intake manifold will be drawing vacuum in the EVAP system when it's not being commanded to. So let's run one more test. So I got some data on a graph. We got the manifold absolute pressure sensor, the fuel tank pressure sensor. Now we're not gonna look at the voltage, we're just gonna look at the PSI. We're at idle right now, and throttle position is just at a rest position. If the purge valve is even just partially stuck open when it shouldn't, we'll see a correlation. Now manifold pressure, this is vacuum at the moment. So there's 4.35 PSI of pressure in the manifold. As we give it full throttle or wide open throttle, that number will increase to 14 because atmospheric pressure is 14. So this will just raise up to 14 and then this should raise closer to zero. So they're just on a different scale. This goes from zero to 14, 14 being uh, equal or neutral with atmosphere. Whereas this is zero being equal with atmosphere and anything in the negative uh, is a vacuum. Anything in the positive is a pressure. So just a little different scales, uh, 14 on this one and zero on this one, our atmosphere. And then of course our throttle position. So as we wide open, this should raise, this should raise closer to zero. Now it is, you know, still kind of around zero, 0 0.036. So that's, you know, pretty close to zero. But watch as I wide open and you'll see this number. So you see it's a little blip on here, but hopefully maybe I'll pause it and you can see how it dropped closer to zero same with this this raised up so that's exactly what it was supposed to do uh and then you can see our, our throttle position was all the way up so let me drive it because then i can give it uh, full throttle longer and you can watch watch this correlation happening let me straighten out i'm on a nice straight road so i'm giving it throttle it did for a second because the vacuum in the manifold dropped so the vacuum in our fuel tank dropped 0.001 for a second. I'll pause it too so you can kind of see a little better what's happening. But there is a correlation between our manifold pressure and our fuel tank pressure. All right, so let's just sum up the theory real quick. So with the purge solenoid disconnected, it's closed. It should be closed all the time. So that separates the intake manifold from the fuel tank. It just shuts it off, puts a gate right there in between. So whatever the manifold is doing, it should not affect the fuel tank at all because it, it's closed off. They're not connected to each other. But if there is a leak, if it is open, even just slightly, then we will see a correlation between what's happening at the manifold and what's happening in the fuel tank. They should not be a correlation. They should not be connected. But if there's a fault and opening, then they will be connected. And that's what we were seeing. Even though it was minute, it shouldn't have existed at all. So let's pull the trigger. We'll go ahead, put on a new purge solenoid. I'll show you how to do that real quick. And then we'll run through that test one more time. So this is the monstrosity. We're replacing this whole entire thing. The purge is actually just right here, but the way it's designed, we replace everything. And interestingly enough, it was cheaper for me to get it from the dealer than it was to get aftermarket. So this is a genuine Ford part which always makes me happy when we can go OEM. So let's start here. So we already got the electrical connector disconnected. And that's just a regular, you pinch on it and pull it off. And then we have this green tab right there. You can see it. 
you want to push that up. And how we do that is underneath there are two tabs that we want to pull and then push up. So you pull it out of the way and then push up and that green tab will come up. Maybe I can show you a little closer. And then we want to take this whole thing and pull it off of its little holder. There's like a little rubber piece on the back side that fits over a, another little metal piece and it kind of holds it in place. We'll just pop that up. This line in the back should just come right off like that. Let me show you a little closer to that clip. So when it's all locked in, that's what it looks like. And there's these two little tabs underneath. So we want to push on those tabs. And then as we push, we're pulling, we're pushing in that direction and it pops it up. So those little tabs underneath are kind of like locking tabs. And we just pull it all the way up and then it slides right off. So that's how we tackle that one. Now let's come over. We got these here. This white one here, you just push on that and there's one on the bottom. And that should pop off. If you look here, you see they just push and separate. And then this one, we pull this and then this here gets pushed. So it's a combination of pull and push and that kind of does the same thing with that lock. So that takes care of everything up top. Now down below will be a little harder to film, but they're very similar fastener styles. You can see where it routes right under here. So you want to pull that off and then follow, follow this one all the way down and pull it off as well. All right, we got the old one completely out. Now that bottom yellow connector, the big tube, is a little of a challenge. What I had to do so you can feel the, it's upside down, let me show you real quick, on this one. So it actually plugs in upside down, so the tabs are actually on the top, whereas the green one, the tabs are on the bottom. On this one, the tabs are on the top, so you can push, and then you can kind of feel this come out a little, and then I got a little pick in there to pop it the rest of the way, just because my fingers uh, couldn't quite get all the dexterity uh, I needed to pop that yellow connector out. So a combination of pushing on these tabs, pushing it down, and then using a little pick to finish it off. But it is doable. Uh, coming in from this angle was really helpful with my left hand. Uh, getting in there, you kind of follow it down. Uh, left hand was, was perfect. Uh, and then you can get in from this direction too with your right hand if you need to uh, just get a different angle at it. So a little challenging, but all in all, really not too bad. So now we'll go ahead and route our new one in and snap it into its spot. And before we put these back on the receiving nipples, what we'll do is take a little bit of silicone paste and either put it on the nipple itself, which actually might be easier, or we could put it on the O-rings inside, just depending on where it is. Now getting it on the nipples down there might be hard, so putting it on the O-rings may be easier for those down locations, whereas putting it on the nipples up here is, is relatively easy. So I'll show you what the silicone paste that I'm talking about. It is not RTV silicone, but it is actually a lubricant for these O-rings. All right, here it is. This is just one brand that exists, but silicone paste, uh, waterproof dielectric grease. So they are the same thing, dielectric grease, silicone paste, and we'll put that as a lubricant. And that'll help protect the seals. It'll keep them uh, nice and supple longer. So I'm just gonna put a little bit on there, a little bit on there, and then uh, let's see, a little on here. I'll just rub it around with my finger to get it spread around. And then we'll make sure that we put a little in here and in there before we put it down on our intake. Okay, so all our hoses are plugged back in. We left the purge electrical connector unplugged. So now we can see our fuel tank pressure sensor, our manifold pressure, and our throttle position sensor. Now it is running at the moment at idle, and you can already see a difference. Let me pull up the old one at idle and this one at idle. You can already see a difference at idle. So let me go ahead, do the throttle, and you'll see the difference with the throttle. Hopefully that angle is good enough. My scan tool died, so I'm actually in the work van putting it on the charger at the moment. It was pretty cool that tools these days are Bluetooth, so I'm able to be in one vehicle while the scan tool is in a different location. Anyway, let me go to the other vehicle. I'm gonna give it some throttle, and then we'll talk about the data we collect. Okay, so if you notice, we had change in the throttle position. We had change in our map, 
but zero change in our fuel tank pressure. That's what we want to see. All right, that completes this diagnosis and repair on this 2015 Ford Edge. Now the purge solenoid is the most common cause for this code, but we always want to just do some quick checks, double check, make sure before we throw any parts onto it. As you saw in the scan data, uh, pretty cool. The purge solenoid should be completely cut off when it's unplugged or when there's no command from the engine computer that purge blocks or shuts off any path from the manifold to the fuel tank. So if there is change in fuel tank pressure, when you change the intake manifold pressure, if there's that correlation between the two, then most likely your purge is at fault because it's allowing a gateway between the intake manifold and your fuel tank when there shouldn't be yet. Now, when the computer commands it on, then that's a controlled gateway. It allows a certain amount of fuel vapors to enter to be burned up uh, for emissions purposes. But when it's shut off, it, it's a gate. It should block off completely. And we saw that it wasn't. So pretty cool yeah, catching it on the scan tool like that. Another symptom of a bad purge solenoid is when you fill up uh, at the gas station, when you fill up after you're done filling up, it may run rough for a little bit. The reason for that is because the purge, again, is open, allowing fuel vapors to enter the intake manifold when they shouldn't be. And so when you're filling up, all that fuel vapor, because the fuel tank pressurizes, pushes vapor out of the fuel tank, it'll end up in the intake manifold and in effect, flood the engine because now you have fuel vapor uh, that shouldn't be there. So the engine computer isn't accounting for it. So it'll uh, act like it's flooding, run really rough until all that vapor's burned and then it'll run smooth again. So if you're getting that symptom along with this code, that even just doubly points you to the fact that it could be a purge solenoid. All right, I think that's it. Just having a scan tool that can read live data. That's the important part here. Now there are other tests I can do bi-directionally, uh, but it's not necessary for this particular code. So just having a scan tool that can read live data, uh, they don't have to be crazy expensive. Uh, there's a couple brands out there. Uh, they're relatively uh, inexpensive, around $100 to $200. But if you think about it, doing this repair on your own, you're probably saving that much just in the diagnosis process alone because a lot of times shops will charge $100 an hour or so just for the diagnosis. And that's, that doesn't include the repair. So maybe with that saved money, purchasing a nice uh, scan tool that can read live data will help you in future diagnosis and repairs um, where you save even more money. All right, well, thanks for watching. Like, subscribe, see you on the next one.